Powerful Nerdcast Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. The first season of Jujutsu Kaisen is over. I haven't been around a lot to talk about it, but I'm here to talk about the final episode of the first season. And why? Because Jujutsu Kaisen kicks ass. This is easily one of the most consistently amazing shonen battle anime series that I've ever seen. And I think it caught a lot of people by surprise. I think when the series came out, nobody expected it to be as good as it really was. And the last batch of episodes are just as strong as some of the other material that we've seen from the show. And it's amazing that they managed to cram so much into a single season. It makes other shows look pathetic in comparison. So I just want to give my final thoughts on the last three episodes of the series and hopefully what we'll see from the future of Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen has three things that make it pretty freaking awesome. It's got really great main characters, really fantastic villains, and some really kick ass action. It's amazing how consistently good the show actually is. You look at long-running shows like, say, Naruto or One Piece, every once in a while you're gonna get an action scene that is really well animated, as if it was done and outsourced by another animation studio, where they put a lot of effort in terms of the animation, the artwork, the direction of the entire episode, and you have to realize that these shonen battle manga and anime series are really all about their action at the end of the day. Yes, they do have good stories and surprisingly compelling compelling characters, but a lot of the times we're reading these shows or watching them simply just to get a little bit of entertainment value out of them. You look at One Piece and Naruto, that doesn't happen too often, and there's a lot of action in those shows. Jujutsu Kaisen just goes above and beyond in terms of what it actually is capable of. Every single action scene feels like it could be the season finale of just about any other show. You can tell that a lot of thought and care actually went into this one, and man, it just shows so much in terms of every single episode. I mean, it, it's not just the action itself, it's just the fact that they do a great job of developing these characters. I, I rarely watch them, I have to be perfectly honest, but at the end of every episode, there are these little funny moments, these comedic moments where they take the characters out of their element and they show us a different side of them that we usually don't actually see in the show. And it's really great levity for a series which is all about exercising curses and demonic entities and lots and lots of blood and gore. It's moments like that that make me appreciate the series because they're not just trying to deliver something which is just going to be a feast for the eyes in terms of action, but they're trying to give us something just a little bit more, something more substantial. And I would say that this entire season did a fantastic job of just that. There were a great cast of characters, with Yuji being a really great protagonist who managed to not steal every single scene that he was in. I would go as far as to say he's one of my least favorite characters of the entire show. I think the last three episodes were dedicated to Megumi Fushiguro, who is definitely, I think, one of the best side characters of the entire series, and I'm really glad that the last three episodes managed to actually take their time to build into him, his personality, his abilities, how they They've evolved since the beginning of the series, how Yuji has changed him as a character, and yet at the same time, they still managed to balance that with a really great, awesome, engrossing story about a cursed bridge, not to mention three brand new villains who just pop up from out of nowhere, and even then, Nobara and Yuji still get a moment fully dedicated to them in the final couple of episodes, and it's all really freaking solid stuff. So let's go ahead and dive into some of these episodes a little bit. I didn't have an opportunity to watch episodes 23 and 22, but they were really great. It was basically the very end of the last arc of the series where you had the Tokyo and the Kyoto School, which were going up against each other, and it all ended hilariously in a big baseball game. I already covered that episode, but they immediately begin a brand new arc here, which starts out as sort of just like the normal story that we saw like from the beginning, where our characters are gonna go to like some haunted place and they're gonna investigate a cursed spirit so that they can exercise it, but mixed into this margarita of madness, we get to see that the villains have unleashed these brand new cursed spirits upon our main characters, these three super powerful spirits. And man, they are just great in terms of their design and their abilities, and they lead to some of the best action in the entire show. We even get to see another one of those Sukuna finger demons come back who gets to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Megumi. And Megumi is really important to this entire arc, as when they actually start to investigate this situation, it takes him back to some of his old haunting grounds, his middle school, where he runs into some old classmates. We even get to learn about a little bit more about the relationship that he has with his sister, something that he's never really brought up in the 
entire series before and, and apparently it's very clear that there's some bad blood going on in his family where apparently he was sold off by his father just to get a little bit of money and he has a sister who has been cursed by this creature which is actually now affecting the main characters in the current storyline where suddenly there are these people who are being killed and stabbed to death by some sort of weird cursed spirit which lives under a mysterious bridge where a lot of people have gone to commit suicide as well as being a place for thrill seekers to go if they want to see all sorts of ghosts and ghouls and creepy shit just like that. So of course Megumi decides that he's got a horse in this race and he wants to do this so that he can help his sister who's incapacitated currently but still is going to be affected by this curse so he decides to go by himself Nobara and Yuji decide to join him and that leads to an amazing conflict where not only do they find this demon but they end up coming into contact with these three cursed demons which have been brought about by Mahito and his group. They are these weird, as they refer to them as these painting demons, these cursed wound painting demons which have been around since ancient times. This old Jujutsu sorcerer who is a very evil man who impregnated this woman nine different times trying to create some sort of weird human cursed spirit hybrid that's basically where these things came from and they're these three demonic brothers and they're gonna fight against all of these characters well one of them's actually gonna sit it out and it looks like he's gonna be an important character for the potential next season of the show but we do get to see that Yuji and Nobara are gonna throw down with two of these main brothers who have really great powers but Megami here ends up getting a fantastic battle against one of the Sakuna finger curse spirits and it's nothing short of amazing it's another fantastic fight scene and what's really great about it is that it actually develops his character even more, showing the huge influence that not only Yuji has had on him, but his sister as well, his training with Gojo, and it allows him to unleash his dimensional space attack, which basically is like a giant swamp which summons all of his Nue creatures to just come in and swarm on this guy. The actual visual of it are those creepy frogs bubbling up from the ground as they get on top of this guy, and this is after Megumi just gets the crap beat out of him. He even realizes that, holy shit, I'm actually pretty freaking strong here, and he actually manages to finish this guy off. He takes the finger but the battle was still really intense and he gets knocked out but while that battle was going on Nobara and Yuji basically end up getting taken away by these other demons those two brothers and these guys are just indescribably freaky one of them is kind of your typical Jujutsu Kaisen monster you know what I'm talking about weird Clive Barker-esque looking motherfucker with a weird double heads and mouths and everything he goes after Nobara and then you have Yuji who's dealing with this really weird looking dude who looks like he just jumped out of Jojo's bizarre fucking adventure and this guy's even freakier he's got blood wings he can attack with blood, so does the other guy, but he's got like this weird monstrous thing on his back which is basically like a giant demon's face. And then it leads to one of the greatest team-up action scenes from the entire show, where not only does Yuji get to do some more awesome stuff, which mostly just revolves around punching the absolute shit out of stuff, but Nobara gets to show off why she is one of the coolest characters in the entire series. I think one of my favorite comments when I was reviewing the show is that someone mentioned that she's basically the female version of Katsuki Bakugo from My Hero Academia. Academia, and I could totally see it in this episode. She was just an absolute fucking boss here, utilizing more of her nails and her hammer in ways that we've never actually seen before, as it looks like both Nobara and Yuji have been afflicted by the power of this like poisonous blood as it goes on their body it starts to like curse them with these weird marks going all over their body but she's able to sort of reverse that back on them by implanting nails in her very own arms which ends up messing with them hurting them physically and mentally allowing them both to basically get the upper hand in this battle as they end up switching opponents and just bringing all sorts of pain in when Yuji ends up getting close against uh, Esso I believe is what his name is the guy with the creepy monster on his back freaking reverse Ryuko Matoi over here he ends up just going nuts here and man the animation here just cannot be described you just have to see it it's fast-paced it's super impactful something that a lot of people don't talk about enough I think is the sound design of the series the music is really great and it of course really helps to accentuate the fact that this is a really high octane crazy action scene but just the moments where Yuji is like punching all of the the, the earth around him the ground every single time he gets a hit you really do feel it every single single time you feel it in your gut this is a show that you want to watch with a great sound system or at least some really good headphones because it's going to blow your fucking mind and then of course you got Nobara who I think was really the showstopper for me in the final episode of the series utilizing a lot of brand new techniques and showing off her incredibly scary personality when she goes in the battle knowing that she could die at any moment here and she is just completely okay with that but if she's gonna go out it's gonna be on her terms and she's gonna make sure that these monsters suffer utilizing a brand new hairpin style technique which visually speaking is just brutal and 
awesome. It's just metal. That's the only way to put it. And basically, they're able to take out one of these things when they realize that they're not actually like cursed spirits that are just going to simply disappear into dust. They are people who have been transformed by the power of these weird cursed womb, whatever the hells they are. And then you have Esso who decides, oh shit. My brother's dead, and I'm losing my shit right here. I know I was going to help out my brother. That was kind of my entire reason for living, but I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. I got to survive so I can kill these guys. And he tries to hitch a ride on this, like, passing truck and holding one of these guys hostage. But then Nobara is able to use one of his arms, which has been sliced off, and able to use her signature voodoo-style technique to not only stop him in place and devastatingly hurt him, but allowing Yuji to get in and deal the death blow. And all of this action is fantastic, but again, they manage to inject another scene which builds upon these characters and makes them a little more layered. I mean, Nobara and Yuji are, are sort of like picked and pulled from the, the anime trope book, but I love that the following scene is the fact that they're coming to terms with the fact that they actually just killed and murdered people. Yes, it was a matter of life and death. If they didn't do anything about it, they were going to be killed in that moment. But the way that it affects the two characters I thought was remarkable, with Yuji, of course, being a little more sympathetic towards his villains. He realizes that there's a lot of weight behind what just happened. He was just forced to kill someone, and it's not the first time that it's actually happened for him. Nobara, on the other hand, sees it in a completely different light, saying that, yeah, it was basically life or death in that situation, and the fact of the matter is those people were beyond saving at that point. They'd been transformed into something that they could never return to, and she basically sort of consoles him in a sense by saying that, well, we were in it together. We killed those people together. And it's a moment like that that brings these characters together, more so than any other comedic scene in the series could actually do. It's little things like that that I really think make these characters really damned fantastic. And basically, the season ends by wrapping things up, showing that our three main characters have come back together. They're going to prepare for a brand new mission. Everybody else is training. It looks like they're about to get a big old freaking uh, raise, or at least they're going to be moving up to a brand new level thanks to the people from the Kyoto School who basically endorse them. This is really big news for them. The villains are preparing for their next big plan, and then it just sort of ends. But there is hope for the future. It ends with a to-be-continued screen, and I really hope that the series is going to continue because Jujutsu Kaisen has been one of the biggest anime surprises of the last season. It really shocked me how good it has consistently been, and going into it blind is, I think, honestly my favorite thing about it. The series hasn't even lived up to its potential, but it managed to do so much in one season that some shows struggle to do through an entire run. And if it does return, I pray that it returns with the same team that worked on it here, because what they have created is nothing short of an anime classic. It's perfect, in my opinion. I, I know that's a word that I shouldn't be saying a lot of the times when it comes to anime reviews, because there's always imperfections. There's always crack in the armor. But every episode was so well thought out, well paced, and so well animated, and filled to the absolute brim with so much atmosphere. All I can do is recommend Jujutsu Kaisen. If you're into, like, supernatural action anime series, stuff like, say, Yu Yu Hakusho or Bleach, this might be, like, the next one. It might even be better than those in some senses. I'm not here to make that debate. I'm just saying that if you like those shows, you might get something out of this one right here. It's deep. It's layered. It's well animated. It has amazing production value. I almost want to make a whole nother video just reviewing the entire season as a whole to give even more thoughts about it because I just don't have the time to encapsulate them here. It's Jujutsu Kaisen, and it's more than worth your time. I didn't do the rundown thing, but that's basically it. That's really all I have to say about this one. Um, it blew me away in terms of its quality, and I really wish I was there a little bit more to talk about the individual episodes the way that they were. But uh, as far as introducing us to these characters and the world they live in and the journeys that they're going to be going on as the future uh, goes... Man, this is, this is one hell of a way to do a first season. Like I said, the surface has not been scratched. They're still just... So much more, especially with the concept of Sukuna, who is basically the Karama for Yuji, if you know what I mean by that. Like, they barely did anything with him in this season, and he's clearly one of the biggest elements of the entire show. Uh, they're doing a great job of building up the side characters and seeing where their stories are going to go. I'm even more interested in Megami's story than just about anybody's at this point, as they've revealed so little of it. And you can see how much his character has grown so much since the first episode, where he had to be saved by someone... 
and ran away from a previous battle against one of these Sakuna Finger Demons. Now he's fighting one in the final episodes, and it shows how much he has changed as a character. He comes across as this dark, brooding, edgy guy, but Yuji has changed him. I don't know if he's going to change Nobara, and frankly, I don't think she needs to be changed. I think she's a lot of fun, but it's interesting to see how Yuji is one of those characters that can have an effect on a lot of the side characters in the series without being overly preachy about it, and that is really awesome. Atmospherically speaking, action-wise, this was a great show. That's really all I have to say, and these final three episodes were just awesome. I love them. Five out of five. I'd love to get your thoughts, though, however. I know mine were scatterbrained and I was all over the place and everything, but I, I just have to get your thoughts about this show. And I'm sorry that this review is rushed and there's not, like, any imagery in it or anything, but I wanted to get my final thoughts on the show, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about Jujutsu Kaisen in the future. I really hope there's going to be another season. I don't want them to rush anything, though, but I don't want them to wait too long a la Attack on Titan. I know that this is based on a manga series which is kind of new, and that means they might be catching up to things a little too quick. Hell, like I said, this whole season was so well-paced and so much stuff happened, it, it, it's kind of hard to get into it. But man, I just want more. And I don't know if I'm going to start reading the manga version or if I'm just going to wait. This is one of those situations where I almost can't wait and I really want to see what's actually going to happen next. But uh, let me just try and say that I'm going to try to do another Jujutsu Kaisen video just to give more thoughts on the series and try to break it down a little bit more. Really, I'm just gushing at this point, though. I loved it. Like I said, I'm even going on now. I'm just rambling. But I want to hear from you guys. Tell me what you thought about the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen. If you're excited for the potential of more, what do you want to see from the future? Who is your favorite character from this season? What was your favorite moment? Let's talk all about it. Comment section below, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. If you did like this video, take your Sakuna finger, hit that like button right now. Helps out these videos a lot, ensures more people can see my content. I also want to thank all of my patrons. You guys are freaking awesome, and you guys go above and beyond every single time, just like Jujutsu Kaisen. You're making monthly donations, and I can't thank you enough for that. Remember, first-time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choosing, as well as adding your name to this list of amazing people that you currently see on screen. You guys are the super producers of Ace Guru. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.